with a round of applause. Join me as we welcome God's choice servant, my father, Apostle Michael Orobo. An intercessor is not a prayer warrior. <laughs> Make no mistakes about it. An intercessor is one who has been vetted by God to be able to stand in the gap for others. A prayer, a prayer warrior can pray prayer points. He can pray with prayer power. But God has not vetted him to stand in the gap. An intercessor is one that God has vetted to stand in the gap for others. This is why I told you, when priesthood begins to play its maximum purpose, the goal will not just be, I'm succeeding in the market. The goal will be that I'm changing the laws in the market. When priesthood enters its reality, the goal will not just be that I won an election. I'm now governor, I'm now president. No, the goal is that you are changing the laws that makes for the workings of that institution. Because everything that governs how that institution runs before you is a priesthood. So when you come with a new priesthood, you must change the modernity. And so if people are winning elections through corruption in Zambia, if you come in by the priesthood of Melchizedek, you will not just win an election, you will change the order. And so after you, anybody who comes through corruption will lose. That's what priesthood does. If people are succeeding in business through compromise and a new priesthood is erected, business will now become something you succeed in through integrity and transparency. That's how priesthood works. And these are some of the things that shape nations. So when we are talking about marketplace priesthood, we are talking about men that have rank to bring legislation and litigation so that they can change systems, alter paradigms, and establish new ideologies that will now govern how operations are carried out within the context of the territory where they find themselves. And you must journey to become a legislator and a litigator. When you get there, you now start receiving ranks. You know, when you become a general, you can be a one-star general. You can be a two-star general. You can be a three-star general. You can be a four-star general. And then you can be a five-star general. There are some things you can do as a one-star general. A one-star general is a brigadier general. They can keep him in charge of a, bat of a battalion or a brigade. But when you become a two-star general, they can make you director of operations. Because at that level, you are now a major general. So beyond the battalion, you can hold a position in the armed forces of the nation. So you can head operations, you can head intelligence, you can head, then you become a three-star general. In certain nations, the chief of defense staff is a lieutenant general, a three-star general. Because most nations don't even have four-star generals. To show you how these things work. So the whole armed forces may have a gap of four-star generals because you don't just give people rank to fill up. <laughs> no, the rank is not a buffet where you pick what you want. People don't fill up. They grow. It is entrustments. They are end. They are badges that are end. And so the same thing happens in priesthood. As all of us begin to minister to the Lord until we are sent and we all become legislators and litigators, you will see that our authorities will be different. Why do many people fail? They want to operate authority levels that they are not qualified for. And they think because we are all e Christians, we are all equal. It's a joke. In salvation, we are equal because God paid the same price for all of us. But in kingdom, we are different. Because the assignment God can entrust us with are different. We are not the same. I'm telling you, we are not the same. And so as you become a legislator and a litigator, you begin to press. That's why two people can be marketplace apostles. One is doing business with ambassadors and kings. Another one will do business with local government chairmen. That's his level of clearance. <laughs> There's no excitement that can make him interact with ambassadors. If you want to even help him, you may think helping him is to invite him for a meeting. Take him there. Tell him to talk. Give him your slot. When he's done talking, they will now note him that this person shouldn't come again. <laughs> because, you see, you don't use textbooks there. You use 
instantaneous inspirations. And if you are not operating at a height where you can bring inspiration that can confound kings, when you go there, you'll be dwarfed. Because when you now stand, what should have become the platform to announce you will become the platform that will disgrace you. That's what, what am I trying to say? Instead of looking for positions, grow your capacity. Grow your capacity. Grow your capacity. Grow your capacity. And when your capacity grows, any door that opens, you come as a celebrated monarch. So when you become a legislator, God now begins to give you rank. And the first rank is the rank of an intercessor. See five things that happen to you before you become an intercessor. I'm now running against time. So let me list fast so that we can make progress. The last point is what I want to dwell on so that I can charge my spirit a little. You know, when I don't have time, I try to calm the place down. An intercessor must pass four, five tests. Number one is the test of purity. If your garment is stained, you will be a casualty of war. Because when you go to the marketplace of nations, there are spirits there that injure men. So if you think the first opportunity you have to a bribe is to take it, what you have done is that you have made yourself a casualty. They will not say anything. It's the day of your manifestation that they will go and bring that file and say, you took bribe. And because you took bribe, you can't qualify. And something will happen to you that will close that door forever. I'm showing you the difference between light and darkness. We operate by a different set of rules. You can have an opportunity. A pastor had an opportunity, went somewhere to preach. And they told him, whatever you, you need, have it. Even the sisters that came to serve were part of the amenities. <laughs> so if you need steak, order steak. If you need a buffet, there's buffet. And there are other kinds of buffet. And the pastor, are you serious? He saw it as an opportunity. That's how ministry ended. Because you cannot touch certain things. He said, come out from among them. He said, touch not the unclean things. They that bear the vessels of God must be holy. One of the signatures we must possess is that we don't compromise. We stand rigidly under the government of a kingdom that is eternal. The Bible said, the standard of the Lord standeth sure. He said, therefore the Lord knoweth them that are his. And he said, they that name it the name of the Lord. He said, they must depart from iniquity. If your garment is stained, you have lost your priesthood. Because Satan can resist you. He said, Zacharias the high priest stood in his office as a high priest. He said, but Satan was resisting him. And there was nothing God could do except, as he said, take off the filthy garment. If the filthy garment is on you, you have no priesthood for the nations. I'm telling you because they've taught us how to cut corners. And they make us feel it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. In Jesus, we have forgiveness. So you have forgiveness of sin. And then you see people who are living the practice of fornication, hoping they will wield scepter where kings are talking. That's why you see young people die of high blood pressure. You see young people die of cancer. And you are wondering, these are supposed to be things that attack old men. They've touched the forbidden fruit. And because they are living dark lives in secret, they become vulnerable. God will forgive you, but you will not have power for kingdom. Because the heir, so long as it's a child, is not different from a servant. You are the heir. You have all that Christ has given you. But if you choose the part of field in the spirit, they look at you like a servant. And he said, you will be placed under tutors and governors. If God wants to help you, he will bring you under tutors and governors. A generation of people who cut corners, liars, criminals, manipulators, calling the name of Jesus and thinking they will receive prophecy to prosper and live in darkness. That's not the priesthood of Melchizedek. When it has to do with Christ, your garment must be pure. If your garment is not pure, you have no place for Jesus. If God wants to help you, he will take you from that throne so that you don't bring ridicule to the name of God. The first test of an intercessor, one who stands in the gap, is that his garment must be pure. The second thing God will test you on is brokenness. Only men of a contrite heart and a broken spirit can wield the gifts of the ages to come. Because when you become proud, it's God himself that will resist you. 
He said, God resisted the proud, but he giveth more grace to the humble. The grace you need to talk so that kings will marvel at you. It comes when you pass the test of brokenness. If you think it's to go there to show that you are the most intelligent person on the table, you are a joker. If you go there, you must show them that you are under another king. You are but the servant of the Most High. Because when they ask you, how do you know these things? You will not say it's because I have three degrees from Harvard. You say, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. But you see, when proud people go to the table, they want to receive the glory for themselves. Go and check everyone who took nations in the Bible. Every time they are asked an opportunity, they are asked a question, they channel the glory to God. How do you think Pharaoh knew that Joseph was a prophet? Because Joseph himself made him know that I'm a servant of God. And so Pharaoh said, because God has shown you these things. He didn't say, you know these things because you are intelligent. He said, God showed you these things. Therefore, there's no one in your class. Take over. We want to go to the table of nations. And our pride is too bogus. God has no place to feature in. Our priesthood will be questioned. If you want to be a man who stands in the gap for others, you must pass the test of brokenness. God will make sure that humility becomes one of the heaviest molecules of your life. The third test you pass as an intercessor is the test of burdens. Burdens. An intercessor, like I told you, is not just a prayer warrior. When you find an intercessor praying, he's praying what is in the heart of the Father. And so, although it's important for you to prosper in the stock market, but what, what, what is God's program there? If you don't know God's program there, and you think you just want to go there and excel, that place is too big for your appetite. Because the Bible said, if you have what to eat, what to wear, and where to lay your head, he said, be content with it. When you are talking about billions, do you think the men who own billions is for food, is for car, is for what to, for what to wear? No, they are setting monies that is too big for your need. Those monies are for the needs of a generation. And so if you want to take over in the market as an intercessor who is representing God in the priesthood, you must know the burdens of God. When God begins to turn your attention to government and governance, ask him, what do you want from this corridor? If God begins to turn your attention to, to the real estate, ask him, what do you want from here? If God is turning your attention to the diamond market, ask him, what is your program? I'm not going there just because I need a better life. I'm going there because you have an agenda. And so that agenda is what drives you. When the agenda of God begins to drive you and the burdens of God becomes your burden, then you have passed the test of an intercessor. And it's on the strength of that that God will begin to give you the authority to declare a thing and it shall be established. But you see, most of us don't understand how the priesthood work. We don't know the dynamics. And because we don't know the dynamics, we cannot wield the authorities. You see many people telling you they want to be as wealthy as Elon Musk. They want to take the cyberspace. They want to take the stock market. What do you do with $10 billion? You think all of that is for a car? You think all of that is for you to travel to Bahamas? God has an agenda. And so when God is talking empowerment over systems and nations, it's because there's an agenda he wants to drive. That's why he said, remember the Lord your God. It is he that giveth thee power to get wealth, that you may establish his covenants, even unto this day. When the burdens of God becomes your burdens, you will notice that there will be strange speed. There will be strange acceleration. And there will be strange empowerment in all your operations. You won't even be able to explain it. The reason is because in the place of burden, we synchronize with God. We and God become one. That's what happened to Moses. He said when Moses was come of age, he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He started feeling the burdens of God because the people of God were in captivity. The people of God were in torment and in torture. That was what affected Moses. Moses was not looking for to become a great prophet. He was not desiring to become somebody that had rule over Egypt. He just had the burden to liberate Israel. And as that burden was growing, God now empowered that burden. And on the strength of that, he commissioned Moses to take over the agenda of delivering Israel from the captivity of Egypt. The third qualification of an intercessor is the ability to sustain body. The fifth qualification is stamina. 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 Stamina in the spirit 
is the capacity to focus on God and God only. There is a realm you get to in power. You will be shocked the number of distractions there are. You are just going to work every day, coming back as a banker. You don't know what is happening. You have a salary of 100,000 kwacha, 150,000 kwacha, and that's okay. You are just living your life. Wait until you become the CEO of a bank. They will tell you we have dinner in Saudi Arabia. And that dinner, the room where they will serve that dinner, if you see those who are serving, you will now know that, oh, there are bankers and there are bankers. <laughs> you ask those who have, who, have to, who have gone to certain places. You will see some distraction that even when you come back, after three months, the distraction will be in the center of your brain. Every day to be read to you because of how vivid and how pleasurable that distraction is. You will carry it in your mind. If you don't have the priesthood that stands in the presence to knock it off, next weekend you will go back, even when there's no dinner. That's why you see that most of our leaders are not in our country. Somebody say he's a senator representing a district. He doesn't visit. He visits there only during election. Senator relocates from the district that he's representing. He goes to live in another nation. Every week, senator is in Dubai. He leaves Dubai. He's in Kuwait. He leaves Kuwait. He's in Paris. He's pursuing distraction because there's no priesthood. Now, those distractions are the things that make men siphon the commonwealth of the people and waste them. Because if you don't have stamina, if you see, you will go to certain meetings and you will see some, for those of you who are men, you will see some women, they will walk in. The perfume they will put on. If you perceive that perfume, you will remember it for two years. <laughs> perfume. And then when you come, they will say, this person will assist you for this week. When she turns and says, hi. <laughs> when you leave that conference, you will be hearing, hi. 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 For two months, you will hear, hi. High, high, high won't go. High will become a, a reverberation. Before you know what is happening, you don't. You have not seen anything. You will see some men when they come to a meeting with you. They just talk to you. They give you a gift. When you open it, what you will see there will be more than what you have earned in ten years. And then they tell you, "Please call me." That please call me. Even if you are a married woman, you will hear it a million times. You will tell your husband next week that there is a course. You are going for training for two weeks. Because that place called me. What he gave you will enter your soul and eat you. I'm telling you why many don't survive in the marketplace. It's a treacherous ground. You will need stamina to survive there. Otherwise, you will go there and you will lose your work with God. Why do you think many of our leaders can't stay in our country? They have met some Arabian girls. They have met some Brazilian ladies. And every weekend, the moment is Friday, their head turns backward. They want to go for that party till Saturday night. It's on Monday, they come back to office and they say, where are the files? They are signing what they can't read. Because they don't have stamina in priesthood. You, do you know how? You think life is as simple as this one. You are saying, oh Lord, give me house rent. The problems are not down, they are up. One of my mentors told a story. He said he went for a meeting somewhere and the lady they attached him to, she just, whether she was drinking water or something, water dropped on her and the water rolled from her arm straight down. One, one molecule didn't hang. The way the skin was. He saw that vision for two weeks. <laughs> if he goes home, he wants to pray, he will just see the skin, the way the, the way the skin. He had to pray, Lord help me, Lord help me. <laughs> Did you read about Solomon? Wise man, great entrepreneur. But suddenly he met strange women. 
he started building different altars and introduced foreign gods to corrupt the covenant of God because there was no stamina there was no stamina before God calls you his certified intercessor he will check the stamina of your spirit what can you ignore to focus on God can you ignore power can you ignore money can you ignore women can you ignore influence if you don't have the capacity to ignore everything and stay true to the visions of Abba you are not a man to be sent to the marketplace because commissioning is a rank in the spirit and for those of us who are priests God will carry us through this route when you enter here and God certifies you and you begin to talk and the installations of darkness begins to fall you will now notice that there are two other things that happens to an intercessor number one is warfare because when you start praying and things the devil has planted in territories begin to fall they will see you as a threat who is that person that spoke and this this program that has lasted for 50 years was shut down they will come for you and when they come for you then god will give you the fifth qualification which is discernment so that you will know when to run you will know when to stand to fight you will know when to sit you will know when to hide an intercessor is like the wind there are times when he rises up with bows and arrows and he fights. There are other times where he disappears. And so for two weeks, nobody sees you. And they say, where has he gone to? You are hiding because discernment has come. Not every battle is fought. Some are avoided. But if you don't have the weapon of discernment, you will not know what it takes to operate in those corridors. Ask those that God has commissioned. They are greatest strength. What makes them invincible is the weapon of discernment. It's as the wind blow it. That knoweth not from whence it cometh or whence it goeth. He says, so are they that are born by the Spirit of God. You can go for some meetings. They ask you a question and you don't answer. You just, you just do like this. Whether you, you are saying yes or no, they can't tell. <laughs> because that, that meeting is not your answer they are looking for. They just wanted to say you too spoke there. So that they will include you among people that will become victims. And so the Holy Ghost tells you, your voice cannot be heard. And so, although you couldn't escape the meeting, you came. When they are talking, you are just doing like this. You do like this until you go. They now want to probe and attack everybody that went for that meeting. They are doing voicing. When they check the whole voicing, your voice didn't appear. So God used discernment to teach you how to escape. And so you will see that you will be on that corridor changing things, yet you are invincible. Because now you have received the qualification to represent God in those corridors. You can't have such intelligence by studying in Harvard. You have such intelligence because you have disclosures from the realm of God. Sometimes you prepare for a meeting. As you are opening the door to enter that meeting, the Holy Ghost said, only answer the question of the man in blue. And then you enter. Only one person is wearing blue. You, become, you sit down. Others are talking. You feel like talking. Keep quiet. You respond to that one man. That's all. You go. They will now come back later and say, who is that person that spoke to the man in blue? You are the only person. And that becomes the reason why you are exonerated or elevated. All of those dynamics are weaved into priesthood. But you see, those men and intercessors, as they create the opportunity to ask some of these men questions, ask them, they will tell you. Microsecond decisions that they made because of impulses, signals that they picked in the middle of a conversation. And that became the deciding factor. And those ones can be taught. No matter how many business mentorship you attend, they don't teach those ones. Those ones are imparted. If you ascend, those things open and you are able to receive them. And those are the things that will make the difference most of the time. Somebody said the difference between life and death is a whisper. When you become an intercessor, there are other levels of authority. And the next level of rank God will give you is the rank of a guardian. You know who a guardian is? A guardian is one who has the capacity to protect others. Because the day we come in the marketplace, God will have to raise you so that you become a covering for the younger ones who are coming. Because these things, you don't master them overnight. And so you find people who should make mistakes and be cut off. But because you are there, you will say something and you will exonerate them. They couldn't access God's frequency, but you became God's presence for them in that corridor. And if the church will grow, we will need people who are mature enough to provide covering for others. Because one, you will open the door for them, and then while they are on the table, 
you will provide support structure so that they are not put to shame. And when they miss it, you will become a system of intervention for them. That's how God runs it. And this is why in this kingdom, interconnection is too important. So most of you who are going up there, you will notice that there are many guardians in that corridor that you will meet. And that's why God will first of all teach you humility. Because sometimes what will bring you under their covering is how you greeted them. When you enter, you won't come and say, all of us are entrepreneurs. No. There are some people who are grandmasters. And God raised them there to cover others. And when you read the scripture, you'll find it. In Acts chapter 9, Jesus appeared to Paul and told him, go to the city, you'll be told what to do. How can you meet Jesus and Jesus directs you to a man? Because there is a structure he has put in place that he will not violate. I know there are people who use, it, who use this um, covering system to make witchcraft and oppress people. That's not what I'm saying. I'm talking about a place of purity where people who sincerely love you and look out for your good and have the authority to help you rise exist. That's what Abraham did for Lot. Two occasions, Lot was in danger. Abraham operated as a guardian. One with the kings and another with God himself. And it was because of Abraham that Lot was saved. That's a guardian. In Acts chapter 10, verse 29, no, 20 verse 29, Paul said to the church in Ephesus, he said, when I leave you, he said, wolves will come. The Holy Ghost is still there, but the guardian has gone. Wow. And so what God does is that when you grow as an intercessor, he will now increase your rank again and make you a guardian so that you will become a covering to others who are coming into that corridor. That's why most of us here, you see that God keeps connecting us to people. We are helping them. We are giving counsel. We are defending them. We are intervening. It's a place. It's a rank. That rank will cause those responsibilities to come to you. And when those things begin to happen and you see that your life is becoming an intervention for others, know that you have grown to become a guardian. And because of you, the heritage of God in systems and territories can be preserved. It is not given to you so that you can oppress others. It is given to you so that through you, people can see the faithfulness of God, the mercy of God, the love of God, and the intervention of God. But you must grow to become a guardian. And if we will take over territories and systems, we need many guardians. Because that's one of the things the people of the world understand. They know who to call and change the table. But when you come to the church, if you have a problem in the market, you turn, you are stranded. Even the people who can help you, you call them, they won't pick. Because they think it's about me and my family. They don't know it's a system of the kingdom. But when we understand that this thing is God creating a program to take over territories and systems, we will know when we have grown from intercessors to become guardians. And when we become guardians, we look out for the weak to deliver them so that our ranks can become large. Otherwise, if we are few, we will be depleted, we will be defeated, and we will not be able to take over. A conference like this, for instance, is an opportunity for guardians to impart you. And some, at some point, there may be interactions we are guardians. We give you some connections to open some doors for you. And in those interactions, some challenges you had that nobody could help you. As we are talking, some guardians can still help you. This is where systemic takeover comes in. That men grow to have the capacity to provide covering for others. Welcome to Nakazo Watch TV. On Akado Watch TV, we are a great team and we work on life transforming messages that will bring you into realms of divine encounter with the world of truth. Please, don't forget to subscribe, like and share our videos. God bless you.